as a financial advisor for over 20 years, one of the most common questions I get asked, and frankly, one of the most important questions, is, hey, Asul, how much money does it take to retire? And obviously, that depends on a lot of factors. And one of the most important factors is where you choose to live. And that's why in today's video, I want to share with you an article that I found on a website called netcredit.com, where they talk about what it costs to retire comfortably in each state in the United States, and they also look at a lot of international countries. But I want you to stay to the end because I'm gonna share with you their methodology that they cal use to calculate these numbers and share some of the pros and cons of this methodology because I, I think it's really important you understand that. Okay, let's go for a walk and talk about the results of this study. So not surprisingly, the least expensive state in the United States was Mississippi at $470,000. I think I probably would have guessed that. I think many of you did as well. And equally not surprisingly, the most expensive state was Hawaii at just under $900,000, $893,000 uh, to retire in Hawaii. And that's, that's total uh, dollars needed. Now, again, stay to the end because there's some important um, there's an important discussion I want to go over with you on this methodology. Okay, so what are some other states here? Folks might find it interesting, and you can find the article again on netcredit.com just by uh, googling netcredit.com and then also retire comfortably by state. How much does it cost? Okay, California is pretty similar to Hawaii at 800,000. Oregon, surprisingly, is almost as high as California at 700,000. Florida, they say, is a little over 700,000 at 730,000. New York is New York State is also 730,000. Texas is less; it's 580,000. Utah, the state that I'm currently in, uh, is 650,000. Um, and let's look at some of these international countries. Um, one, well, for reference, the United States, our average on, in, in total. Um, in average for the whole country would be $700,000. Uh, so Mexico be quite a bit less at $310,000. Portugal, which is a common place uh, Americans like to go to retire. Uh, Portugal is 410,000. The reason for that, by the way, is it's relatively easy to get your citizenship in Portugal, or it was in the past. Um, England is a little over $500,000, $525,000. Australia and Canada is $550,000. France, surprisingly, is $500,000. So that's what uh, it looks like internationally. And I can tell you I've been fortunate. I've been able to do some traveling. I have talked to a number of expats. Um, and, and many folks really enjoy their retirement, at least for a few years. It doesn't mean you're going to live the rest of your life internationally. But, you know, many expats might, uh, if they own their home, choose to rent out their home and live internationally for a while. Um, I'm trying to see if I have Thailand um, in here. Uh, I, I don't have that, but I know that um, netcredit.com did cover what Thailand was. But I did want to talk about the methodology because I, you know, with all of these things, it, it all comes down to how the calculation is done, which is why when you're looking at something as important as how much does it take for you to retire, I think it makes sense to, to work with a, a, what I call a fee-only financial advisor, somebody that has a fiduciary duty to you, so that they can look at your specific situation. So let's let's talk about the methodology that they use. So uh, they uh, assume that the average person is going to live 15 years in retirement. I think that's really low. I don't know about you, but I'm hoping to get a lot more than 15 years in retirement. Uh, so what they did was they took the monthly expenses for relatively large cities in each state and they took that monthly expense and they multiplied it. 15 years would be 180 months, um, and it was actually 182 months. So they just took that number and multiplied it by 182. Uh, and then they added 20% to that number, and that was the way that they decided on how it is comfortably. 
But let's talk about what some of the assumptions are in here. And all of this is disclosed in the article, so I, I applaud them for sharing the calculation. But I think for many of us, we're going to say, you know, I'm, I'm not sure I'd be comfortable using these numbers. So they assumed instead of owning a home, you had a one-bedroom apartment. They assumed that you ate 15%, 1-5% one of your meals out and 70% of those were in inexpensive restaurants. They assumed that you drank coffee outside of the home only occasionally. Um, so anyways, that's, that's how they calculated it. They looked at the expenses. There was a third party that had actually done the study. Uh, and then they, I believe they licensed the data, which is one of the reasons I'm not showing the actual charts. The charts are well done. Um, but I suspect they're copyrighted, and I didn't, frankly, I didn't want to get in trouble uh, using copyrighted tables, and I wanted to respect uh, the work that they had done. So this is the total dollars um, that they say it would take. Um, again, all they did was look at the monthly expenses and multiplied it by 182. So how does that look? You know, how should you look at that? Because most of us are gonna have social security, so not all of that is gonna to have to come from our savings. So how do we take that into account? I think one of the things to do is look at what the average social security check is in the United States, and even more important than that, you can look at what your social security check is going to be and, and factor it in. And you can get that at the Social Security website, which is ssa.gov. Um, you can go there and the Social Security Administration will tell you this is our best estimate of, of what your Social Security check is going to be. Obviously, it depends on when you decide to start taking Social Security. Um, for many of us, our full retirement age is gonna be 67 or older. And for every year that you take your Social Security check early, they're going to reduce the amount of your monthly um, payment by five to six percent. So if you retire at 62 and your full retirement age is 67, you're gonna get 70% of what that full retirement age amount is. And for every year that you wait past your full retirement age, you get an extra 8%. So you're gonna get 124% if you wait to 70. Okay, so that's how that works. But what is the average Social Security check? It changes every month, but as of January of 2024, the average Social Security check was $1,907. But that changes a lot based on how old you are. So if you wanna, if we, uh, we can also look at this data by what's the average Social Security uh, check by age and at 62. That average Social Security check is $1,300. At 65, the average Social Security check is $1,550. For 67-year-olds, the average Social Security check is $1,880. And for 70-year-olds, 70 70 year the average uh, Social Security check is a little over $2,000 a month, $2,038. And then the rest of this, you know, so that's what Social Security is gonna cover on a monthly basis. And then the rest is going to have to come from your savings. And uh, according um, uh, to the uh, Federal Reserve's the survey of consumer finance, um, the average net worth, and your net worth is just the value of all of your assets minus your liability. So it would be your bank account. Uh, it would be any uh, investments that you have. It would be the value of your home, less any debt that you owe. So it would be less any mortgage that you have, less any car loan, less any credit card debt. And then those are the major sources of debt for most of us. But um, for Americans, uh, 45 to 54, the median, half, half have more, half have less, the median net worth is 250000 Again, this includes the the equity in your home, uh, 55 to 64, it's 365,000, and 65 to 74, it's a little over 400,000. So that's, you know, so you would look at, I think this netcredit.com uh, report is helpful to give you an indication, like obviously it's more expensive to live in Hawaii than Mississippi, and this gives you a feel. So it's about twice as expensive, but. The assumptions that they made living in a one-bedroom apartment, it's also 
the expense is just for one person, it's not for a couple. But you can get an idea of what are the relative costs by state and then dig deeper for yourself. And if, if you want a, a better idea of how much does it take to, to retire comfortably, I have a video here that talks about uh, three easy ways to know how much you need to retire. I encourage you to watch this video. It's kind of part two. It's a deeper dive. It's my views on how much it really takes to retire. Three easy ways to tell how much you need to retire. I'll see you in that video. And thanks for watching this one. Bye-bye.